deeper love for the prodigal son who went away and did all of the crazy things in that uh, world where he got locked into drinking, drunkenness, drug addicted, swine eaters, eating the worst of foods. But when he came to himself, because the king, as in the case of Solomon, did not just send messengers after him, but he had to come himself in person. And when he came back to himself, he runs to his father, who lived in an eastern land. And when he pulled him out and he came back, what did he do? He went and got the crown. He went and dressed him up in the robes. And the other brothers who were obedient tried to compare their condition to the prodigal son. We have been with you all this time. Why would you rejoice and make merry and have a feast and put upon him the robes and put upon him the crown? And they became jealous and envious. This is what the world is portraying, that they believe that they are more righteous than the raggedy man that was pulled up out of the blood, who's a member, a mud, who is a member of the family, but they do not honor and respect that member. And then the, the king says, the father, he says, he who is lost and is now found is more precious to me than you who have stayed here and you're gloating but you have not gone out to even help the prodigal son. Right, right, right. But you want to be self-righteous. Yes, I have been with you yes, all this time doing what? Nothing. Right. Enjoying the fruits of the father's labor, right, right. but not joining the fight right. to resurrect a mentally dead people until in that circle of scientists. One man spoke out, named Osman Sharif, and he said that our lost found people will not return until we send them a messenger who will bring them back into the circle of gods. But he says, I'm going to destroy the circle of the gods. Because when he returns, who is lost and is now found, we don't need the circle of scientists anymore because each one of them that is called and is chosen will be a god themselves. Amen. So in my reviewing what it was that I was to say today, I have to thank you before I continue, all of you who labored to come to honor my visit on the 19th day yeah. of May. Yeah. And not a mosque, but a study group. Yeah. And in reality, that's where we all should be. Because when you become elitish, bourgeoisie, OK? You think that you have risen above being a study group. The mosques should remain a study group. There are no big eyes or little U's. And if you raise yourself above the rest, then you are an enemy to your own progress. You do not have to be in a mosque to be a good one from among those who have been chosen. The nation started with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan in what? Study groups. See? So in study groups, you have an opportunity greater than those who are necessarily in a mosque. Because you sit together, you dialogue together, you study together, you start magnifying and expanding your breast expanding your mind 
through, we can use the word intellectual challenges, but you have more of an opportunity to research and bring that research forward to be as a help in the nation's progress. Then all of a sudden, you get a, <laughs> excuse me, you get someone over you that decreases that spirit of study, and now you have to take marching instructions from an exalted one. <laughs> <laughs> and you forget that Allah is the exalted one because you want to make a big name for yourself so you start ordering people around doing things that are outside of the spirit and the principle of your faith and I, who have been in the Nation of Islam for 50 years, wow. this year makes my 50th year, I have not changed my spirit or belief or search for more knowledge because I may be a member of a mosque. But I don't consider myself to be a member of a mosque. A mosque is limited. A mosque is a building. And I've always had that free spirit to investigate the word and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he, in his training of me, allowed me to go out searching for knowledge because he knew that I would not just keep it to myself and just say what I have learned no, my immediate duty and responsibility is to come back and share it with others who may not have that opportunity to go into the field. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, brothers and sisters, is the greatest man that has ever lived to be mentioned among the greatest of the ascended masters, if you want to use that word, <laughs> because where he is now, and I want to make it clear, is in that area of his training and preparation by God to be able to guide and instruct us without having to see him. He works inside in the midst of what you call the scientist class, angelic hosts. And he is the one that taught me how to prepare to tune in. So if he didn't know then how to tune in, how could he prepare a few of us to learn how to tune in? Do not be surprised with some of the things that I may share with you, because I prayed over it. And I asked Allah, is this the right moment and the right time to share some inner secrets? Will I get myself in trouble? Will people walk away and say, goodness, what was she talking about? Is that the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Or is that her innovative thinking, her visionary mind that is operating in the dark? If I share with you, if God permits me to share with you some of my experiences walking, with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It may help you to perceive me a little different than the way that you have perceived me before. Because of being taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I get more and more humble in the things that he's showing me. I don't want to boast, and therefore, therefore, I lay back and say to you, certain things of my experiences, world travel, but I stay on the surface because I